Hello, Shane McCasker here, Intelligence Software. Welcome to another webinar. Today we're going to talk about advanced LinkedIn for recruiters. Um, we're going to cover a whole range of topics. Um, starting off, looking at a lot of people, a lot of the time I'm talking about LinkedIn, recruiters tend to focus on trying to find people. But I'm going to start off just by turning that around a little bit and saying, well, how can we set ourselves up so people find us? Because uh, it's really important. It's a, it's a side of the, the LinkedIn puzzle that a lot of people miss. After that, of course, I'm going to look at uh, ways in which you can use LinkedIn to find people. I'm not going to focus on search so much today. I'm going to look at other ways that you can use LinkedIn within LinkedIn to find people that are useful to you. I'm going to look at connections and building networks. And then I've got a few other bits and pieces stuffed up my sleeve just to see how the, the time goes. Okay, I'm going to jump straight in and we're going to go to uh, LinkedIn. This is my home page. And I'm going to ask the question, first of all, what is it about LinkedIn that allows you? I'm going to run into how you solve this problem. Say I'm looking for a recruiter. I'm just going to do such a basic search here. I'm just going to put it in the people search, top left, top right hand corner, and run and see what happens. Lo and behold, I found nearly half a million results. Okay, so half a million people on LinkedIn are being found under the keyword recruiter. But out of those half a million people, Patrick Campbell here happens to come to the top. Why is it that I find him over the other half a million people? I'll explain why. <laughs> LinkedIn does something that search engines do not, and for a very good reason. If I search Patrick's page here to see how many times he uses the word recruiter, you'll see I'm just doing a, a search on, I'm using Chrome here, and he has put the word recruiter 1,007 times on his profile. That's why he's coming ahead of the other half a million people on LinkedIn. LinkedIn search prioritizes people who use the word a lot. Uh, now, Google doesn't work that way. Bing doesn't work that way. In fact, that they would see that as keyword stuffing, and they would actually um, disadvantage you for trying to do such a thing. LinkedIn doesn't seem to care particularly when you search for people through LinkedIn. It prioritizes people who use that word more often. Now, use that to your advantage or not, it's up to you, but it does mean if you want people to be found, you need to use the keywords that they will search LinkedIn on uh, and regularly. Repeat the words all the time. Okay, now let's actually have a little bit more uh, look in, in a bit more detail uh, at profiles and how they work. Because whilst LinkedIn may value you using the word repeatedly, uh, on your profile. Generally speaking, when you're looking at a profile, you probably don't care that much. Patrick here has used the word recruiter over a thousand times. Really, Patrick, your, your profile may look good to LinkedIn, but it doesn't really look good to anybody who's looking at your profile. So from a person's point of view, let's break the profile down and try and make it a little bit more attractive and include things in your profile that you want people to stumble upon and, 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 and react to. I'm going to use my own profile for this. Um, not that I'm holding my profile up as a, as, a, as a fantastic thing to look at, but I'm just going to highlight a few issues on it. Okay, first of all, my name's at the top of it, fair enough, and it says Intelligence Recruitment Software. That's a heading. Uh, it doesn't tell, it's not based on my current employment. I've put that in, and you can go in and edit it, and you can see that. That's important because Shane Custer Intelligence Recruitment Software appears all over LinkedIn. Anytime you hover over my name or profile, it's going to be your name and this opening caption. The opening caption should have some sort of call to action. A lot of people put email addresses in there, put mobile telephone numbers in there. That's fine. I think it's important to put some sort of strap line that explains who you are and what it is you do. I've also got uh, below that a summary. And this is one thing that I do, and I, I highly recommend it. Within your summary, include in fairly clear detail your contact details. Because uh, whenever you put contact details into LinkedIn, LinkedIn tends to hide those if you put it into the, into the contact section from your people that aren't related to you. Now, that doesn't really work well for me. I want people to be able to find me if they're looking at my profile. I want to make it easy for them to make contact with me. So put those contact details in there. There are contact details in the main section. Um, and notice how, with the websites in particular, mine says intelligence software, Shane's recruitment blog, and Twitter. Now, whenever you set up your profile, it gives you options. I'll show you this. Let me, let me just edit this information. Edit my profile, and I'll show you how this works. Edit contact details. 
edit my websites. You'll see that Twitter allows you to create websites as being personal site, company site, blog. Never choose any of those. Always go for other. Because when you choose other, you can put a title in. And that just makes it so much easier for people to identify what website it is they're actually clicking on. Some of the other stuff in here. Uh, Obviously, it's a case where this is, I should have mentioned this in front, my profile is 100% complete. Again, if you want to be found, you need to have 100% completeness on your profile. That means you need employment details, education details, you need references, you need skills, you need other stuff that LinkedIn tells you that it needs. If in any doubt, click on the improve your profile, it'll tell you what you're looking for. But given that we know that LinkedIn fires off keywords and using them all the time. You'll also see that I've got keywords stuck into a specialties option here. I've got uh, within the employment history, I've added in tag words in here that people go searching on, including my own name, and that'll appear in all the, all the sections. So I need opportunities to put keywords in. I've also added a few extras in here, which applications, you can add a lot of different applications into a profile. Let me just show you this again. I'll just go and edit my profile one more time. If I go add sections, look at all the different sections you can add into your profile in a second. You've got uh, courses, honors, languages. You can choose to include these or not. Uh, you can add applications in. You can link to files. You can link to your blog pages as I have. You can put polls. You can all, all sorts of different things. Play around with them. They're quite limited. The, you know, Some of them are useful and some of them aren't. I don't know if I'd advocate it, but advocate it if you've got something useful to say. It's a way to put something in that's a call to action and is well worth looking at. So go on and explore that and, and, and beef up your profile. Okay. One other fairly critical thing is that you've got two profiles on LinkedIn. You've got your LinkedIn profile that when you search LinkedIn, you can see two varying levels of completeness depending on how close you're related to somebody. But you've also got a public profile. And the public profile is available through search engines. You can see it. The whole, you don't need to be in, in LinkedIn, a member of LinkedIn to see it, or have an account with LinkedIn. And so what I'm going to do is just on the edit page, I've got this URL, uh, uk.linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Shane McCusker. This is a vanity URL. I'm going to edit it. it. Press the edit button. It brings me in to edit my full public profile. You can choose which bits. I pretty well ticked everything here, are visible publicly. I've also said make my public profile so I don't hide it. You can also customize the public URL. So this link, Shane McCusker, goes uk.linkedin.com forward slash in Shane McCusker. So I can change that to be whatever I want. Bear in mind, Google looks at uh, URLs and values them. So I want to optimize my profile against my name. Therefore, my name's in my URL. What I can also do from here is I can create a profile badge. So if I want people to connect to me, I can put, take a badge. I can take this is HTML code. I can copy that, I can put it onto my web page, I can put it onto the footer of my emails, you can include it in anything promotionally you send out, so you put a job ad up, put your view my profile on LinkedIn, and you drive people to your LinkedIn page to encourage them to look at your profile, connect with you, and uh, take advantage of the network that you can build up through LinkedIn. Okay, a couple of other things, I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to randomly click somebody's page and hopefully I'll get a, a good one that's going to share another point. Some of the things that, it's all very well people finding you, but let's turn this around and say, okay, now I want to have a look around and see, right, what about me finding people? Now, obviously, you've got this people search up at the top. I would highly recommend you ignore that more or less most of the time. I'll always click on advanced search and go into advanced search because there's a whole lot more you can do there, and it's a much more accurate way of finding people. But let's assume that you've found some people, you've created your list, and that's your first iteration. Now you want to build on from this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click a profile here and we'll have a look at it because there's a few other bits I want to point out. When you find somebody that's close to what you want, so let's assume that Owen here is somebody who's close to I'm going to scroll down and on the right hand side of his profile, you usually get this viewers of this profile also viewed. You don't always get it because people can switch this off. I'll show you where this is. If you go into your settings panel, drop down your name hit settings, you're in here. And you can turn off uh, whether people see your, um, uh, your viewers of this profile also viewed box. Personally, I switch it off because I don't want to have my site driving traffic to other people's sites. I want people to stay on my site, but you can switch it off. Most people don't. 
That means that whenever you look at one profile, you tend to see other people that are sort of similar or related or, or some around there. So if you find one person who's good and you want to find people that are similar to that, then you can always use this viewers of this profile also viewed section on the candidate on the person's profile results. The other thing of course you can do um, just I'll look for a salesperson. I'm gonna break my lab look for a now you do a search and you get these people you also get a link that says similar. I'm gonna show that this is, takes me to a search result that when you find one person that you think is good, how do I find other people like that person? You can use this similar link. Now, you can do a search and find it that way, or you can do it another way. Whenever you're on a profile, I'm just going to point out this, this URL at the top. I don't need that bit at the end. Not needed. It's the same result. Okay. This URL, www.linkedin.com forward slash search forward slash FP search question mark, view type equals sim and etc. You don't need to remember it. I can post it later on or you can just do the similar search and find it. But at the end of that comes a number. And that number is quite interesting. Whenever you look at any profile on LinkedIn, it always has a number associated with it. So Sharon's number, that's her number. Okay. If I want to find people that are similar to Sharon, I'll go back to search. It's the number I had for Phil change it to Sharon and lo and behold I'm now finding people that are similar to Sharon. So I can use this URL, change the number I want and I can find people that are similar to the person that I'm interested in. There are other things we can do as well. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Balash, whose surname I can never pronounce, Paraskuzi, uh, I'm not even going to bother trying, anyway, that's his name there. He came up with this uh, similar thing, that, that's the, the searching similars. Uh, you've also got this one. This is a way to tell LinkedIn to search based on somebody's connections. And if I put it like this, uh, view type equals CC and CC ID equals and then somebody's number, it's giving me an ability to search somebody's connections. Now Balash here, he has limited my ability to see his connections. He switched that off. So what I'm getting effectively is the people that both Balash and I are connected to. Now this is quite useful because well, it enables me to see who's connected to it, allows me to search that, it allows me to see where the connections are. So that's a useful thing in itself. But whenever you find somebody who opens their connections, a friend of mine, Kevin here, sorry Kevin, I keep using you as an example because Kevin has a, <laughs> an alphabetically early name on my connection list. I'm going to change that over to Kevin's number. Kevin doesn't close his contacts. Kevin allows his contacts to be open. And in this reason, I can search not just, I can search all Kevin's contacts. So I can find who he's first degree connected to, second degree connected to, group connected to. I can see the companies. Kevin used to work for a company called Career Jones. I'm sure a lot of the South Africans will know. And up comes all the people that he's connected to in, in Career Junction. Imagine if Kevin worked for a company I wanted to head on from. Guess what? He's my way in to getting access to all the people that work in that organization. It's a good way to network through. He might have worked in a couple of companies. I can see his networks, his internal connections within those organizations, and I know he knows those people. So it's a really interesting way to build these organogram structures within organizations. There's a couple of other things you can do here, by the way. Um, one thing that I really like about this is that you don't need to use somebody else's profile. I can actually search on my own connections. I'm just going to change the ID to my own ID. What this does, I've got a lot of connections, I've got 5,000 of them. It gives me a mechanism that I can use all these filters uh, to search my own connections. Yeah, and I can put in all sorts of different ways of searching all the filters down the left-hand side. Notice this, by the way, Antel International, I have 42 connections with. I'm using that as an example because this is not the only way to search connections. The way you may be more familiar to search connections is just go straight into your connections page here are all my connections. Slowly. Okay, 5,000 connections makes LinkedIn struggle from time to time. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You can do it. Let's refresh this page, see if I can get it working. Please come up. It's going to be a very slow demonstration if I can't get it to come up. 
Okay, here's all my connections. I can also use searches here. So I can put in keywords up in this section, whatever. However, note this. I'm just going to remove the tags that I have. I'm going to look at companies. Do you remember my Antel search? It said Antel International 42. When I search this way, it says I've only got 30 people that work in Antel International. So here's two ways you can search LinkedIn effectively that look the same, but they give different results. One of the secrets to a good sourcer is to be able to vary your parameters, look at different things. I'm assuming this is a bug in LinkedIn. I can't think of any other reason why those two searches would be different. But this other search, this search where you're looking for a uh, putting, putting and doing the, the, the ID stuff into the URL seems to work really well. Okay. Let's go on whilst I'm talking about connections to look at a few other things. A lot of people think it's a good idea to have a big network. I think it is too. If you're connected to lots of people, it means you can message lots of people. Your search results are bigger because you've got a wider pool of people to connect to. More people are first degree, second degree, third degree connected to you. So LinkedIn sort of works better. You can find people on it. You can message people that you're first degree connected to and they can message you. Uh, and it's a case where uh, whenever you've got this big pool of people, you can basically do more with it and LinkedIn works more effectively because that's the nature of the way it works. Now, there's a few limitations to LinkedIn. LinkedIn, there's a, theory, a maximum supposed limit of 30,000 people, 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. However, uh, according to that uh, keyword thing that we showed with Balash, uh, when you look at people who've got open networks, some of them, who are big connectors, have more than 30,000. So that sort of implies that LinkedIn's rules saying you've got a maximum connection of 30,000, that doesn't quite work. There are other people out there who have got more than 30,000. Another thing is, LinkedIn limits the number of people that you can invite to connect with you. Theoretically, it gives you 3,000 connection invites. That may sound like a lot, but I'm going to show you in a minute it's not. However, once you use up those connections, all you have to do is email customer service on LinkedIn and say, I've used up my connections and I'm active network builder, can I have some more? And they will send you more. When you do that, however, always ask them. You'll see that you've got outstanding invitations. I can see the invitations that I've sent out. Always close those off because if you say to LinkedIn, LinkedIn just press a button, just remove them. You can have thousands of invitations. You ask them to remove it, they will just remove all the outstanding ones because there's a big problem when you send out a lot of invitation requests. If too many people turn around and say, I don't know you, then LinkedIn will bar you and it will prevent you from linking to anybody else unless you know their email address. For a long time, this was a problem. For a lot of recruiters, you know, you only have to invite a few people and say, you don't know them, you find them on LinkedIn. I'm a recruiter, I'm recruiting for XYZ, would you be interested in say, I don't know this person. And you get barred from inviting people to LinkedIn. This is a major problem. However, apparently now is the case that you can, you can solve that problem if you clear out the sent emails and then ask LinkedIn to clear them out. Once they clear them out, it's an automated process. Apparently, the, um, you, you can, you can uh, once again connect to people without having to know their email address. So I haven't tried this myself. I have never been barred from LinkedIn from sending. I got a few, few warnings, uh, but generally speaking, that hasn't happened. Uh, and it, so this appears to be a way that we can now solve this major problem with people that were over, overly enthusiastically inviting people. So armed with this knowledge, how then do we invite a lot of people? All of you should have big databases of candidates. So therefore, I'm assuming you should have big lists of email addresses. You may meet people you know, they may be candidates in your system. You can take those email addresses, go to connections, add connections, and drop all the email addresses in a common delimited form in there. What's a common delimited form? Maybe you don't have one. I can solve that problem for you. There's a lovely little website called Email Extractor. URL for it is eel.surf7.net.my. What you do is you take a spreadsheet, you take um, text, you take it in any form, drop it into the input window, press extract, and it will output all your email addresses in a common delimited form cut and paste that back into email in, into LinkedIn, drop it into this box, and voila, you've got a whole list of people that you can send invites to. Send out your invites. As I say, you've got up to 3,000 invites you can use at any one point in time, and every 30 days, you can, if you use those up, you can ask LinkedIn to give you more. 
Personally, I haven't really gone down this route of mass mass uh, invites. Um, I connect to people another way, and I'll explain some of those now. Okay, another thing, another URL you might be interested in looking in is this one. Oops, that's the MD microphone. Bring it This one. LinkedIn.com forward slash people forward slash PYMK. People you may know. And LinkedIn will actually suggest people to you that are out there that are usually second degree connections that it thinks you should connect to if you know them. Uh, and you can see that it's given me some people, Anton here, uh, I amazingly share over 1,000 connections with Anton. That's 20% of my connection pool, so that man must be massively well connected. Um, if you scroll down this list, it's a big long list. It doesn't look it, but it is a big long list. It'll give you lots of people. Just give me swap and go through the list, see if there's anybody there you think, oh, I could connect with that person. LinkedIn has a tendency to give you people that are good connectors. So you can see that most of these people I share a lot of connections with. And if I share a lot of connections with them, then chances are they'll happily enough connect with me because LinkedIn will tell them that it's sharing connections with them. So that's quite a nice way, just building your network, just passively inviting people. Um, whenever you connect to somebody, I'm not going to connect with this individual, you have a standard message that says, I'd like to add you to my professional network. I would recommend that you don't change that. Uh, if you've got a specific reason to connect with somebody, by all means say so. But if you don't really have a specific reason, to leave it as it is. There was some research carried out by my my friend uh, and compatriot for True SA, Bill Borman, uh, he, he sent out a pile of invites. All, some of them were personalized, some of them weren't. He did the analysis on it and was getting a much better response rate for the ones that were standard. And I suppose the, the theory being is that um, people will happily connect with you um, unless you give them a reason not to. And if they think you're going to spam them or you're overly enthusiastic and you think he got their test too much, then chances are they won't connect with you. So a standard message seems to be quite effective in asking people to connect with you. However, the main mechanism that I use to connect with people is groups. I love groups, as I'm sure some of you may well know. I'm a member of lots of them. Um, I set up two groups in the South African sphere. One's called South African Recruiters, and the other one's called South African Jobs. And one of the reasons I did this was because groups allow me to build my network. One, it allows me to post stuff up there. Um, and whether I own the group or not, it doesn't really matter. It allows me to put stuff up there and be seen by people. And if people see me, then I can connect through that. Groups are a fantastic way to search for people. You can look at a member section of a group you're a member of, and you can search for the membership. Ignore the, 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 the basic thing. Always go to advanced search. And lo and behold, you get all these lovely filters down the right-hand side. You can do keyword searching, and you can add filters onto them. So it's a really useful way to be able to search groups. Uh, we showed you before, by the way. Um, there are ways and means that you can uh, take the, 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 the group IDs and change those uh, so you can actually search uh, for groups that you're not a member of. I've done that in previous webinars, so I'm not going to reiterate that today. The other mechanism that I use, because I run some of the groups, whenever people join a group or request to join a group, they get it, automatically get an email from me. And in fact, they actually get two. They get one when they, when they join and one when they're accepted. Now, anybody who gets two emails from me in quick succession then very often gets a request to connect and therefore very rarely do they say they don't go on to connect and in the vast majority of cases they do connect. So I use the groups and people joining groups uh, as a way to connect with them. Uh, initially, I started the group which was South African Recruiters and that was really to create the people that I wanted to connect with, which would be the recruitment industry give them a forum which a lot of people connected to and that was great. But I realized there was a lot of people who were recruiters who didn't want to create to connect to a recruiters group because that wasn't people they dealt with. So I set up another group called South African Jobs, which is really there to appeal to people that recruiters are interested in. So if I set up a group that recruiters are interested in, it gives recruiters a way to post jobs without any cost. It builds up a big network. I'm a neutral vendor so I didn't have any axe to grind or, or, or was not considered a competitor and therefore recruiters join that to post jobs. And it's a way that it's, it's really building up. It's only been going for a few months. We've got about 2,000 members of it now. If you're in South Africa or want to recruit in South Africa, join the group and post jobs on it. The jobs uh, will be seen internally by the group members, but it's an open group. So the search engines see it. It's a really good way to get SEO and encourage people to, to view your jobs through search engine because let's face it, LinkedIn's going to be bigger than any of our websites. It's a lot bigger than any of the South African job boards. So it's going to create good SEO and have a lot of presence on the, uh, on the internet whenever you're trying to, to, to see jobs. 
Okay, um, that's about it for today. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to post them on to Twitter, and I'll ask, answer those now. I'm just going to post, I got and I'm going to do some joke from my webinars. Normally in my webinar, I don't mention anything about what I do whatsoever, but today's going to be a little bit different. Um, We've finished the, the LinkedIn stuff. I'm now actually going to start, talk, talk a little bit what I, I do for a living. And I'm going to show a product that I developed, which is intelligent software. So this is a little bit of a, it's not so much a sales pitch, but it is a product demonstration. And if you're interested in this, then please please hang around for the next 30 seconds and I'll show this. And, and after that, then we'll, we'll look at Twitter and try and get the message of it. So if you've got questions on the LinkedIn stuff, post it on Twitter now. Okay. What I do for a living is called intelligent software. A long time ago, I used to be a recruiter and faced with the frustration of having thousands of people for companies employing people and only ever making a handful of places. I want to try and help recruiters work in a more effective way and make more placements. And my primary mechanism for doing that is this product. It's called intelligence and we sell it. If you're interested in buying it, then please come and talk to me. Uh, but the way that it works is about trying to give you visibility of what goes on. So I'm going to give you a quick overview. We try and keep it as simple to use as possible. So if it's simple to use and you've got a tidy desk, you can see what's going on. You've got a candidate screen. Easy. It gives you a profile information about the candidate, where he works and what he does. You've got a CV. You can open up the CV with one click and you've got all your contact information at the bottom. The other half is a client database. You've got all your companies here. You've got the people you know there, all the jobs you're working on every time you speak to somebody. When you've got a job, you do a search. It could be automatic, it could be manual. You want to the search, you've got a shortlist. Here's my shortlist, bottom right. And a name brings me to Anne's record, Clean brings me to Edward's record. All the tick boxes work me through the process. Tag them if they're useful, reject them if they're not. Contact them, they say they're interested. You send a CV, you get an interview, offer and accept it. So you've got all your information stored here and you've got your applicant tracking system going through. Easy peasy, but less how do you make more placements? It's all about trying to help you up your game spot the opportunities. The red tick boxes on the shortlist. It tells me Alice here has already had her CV sent on her and has been interviewed by this client but for a different job. So it stops me making a fool of myself by sending somebody one of my colleagues has sent before. But it means that Phyllis can give me inside information about their interview processes and what it was. Maybe she just was pipped to the post. She's still available. Here's Phyllis's CV. We interviewed her six months ago. She thought, thought she was great. You can cut out the five stages of, of selection process and give her the job immediately. How, how much more professional is that when you're approaching people? Mary John here. Highlights the ACC. Highlights ACC. That means the company name is mentioned on her CV. Immediately we tell you that here's one of your candidates who's mentioned, who mentions the client company on the CV. Intelligence is full of these little highlights, these little opportunities to, to make a placement, to get more information, more value. What we also do is we've got a whole host of stuff on the client side because it's about whenever you look at a company, I want to know everything there is about the company. I want it on one page. I want it easy. So we've got all you know the work there. But over here on the right hand side, you've also got a list is automatic all your candidates who work there and what they do. So I can see the type of people they employ. Like the ones in red are people I've placed. The ones in blue are candidates references that could be. Uh, somebody, their employer, their line manager, somebody's important. References are always more important than the than the candidate themselves because they get paid more money, they're passive job seekers, they're the decision makers. We've also, I scroll down here, the people shown in yellow are people who, where the three I group PLC simply appears on their CV. Finally, if I press my browser button, a browser opens up and it gives me all my LinkedIn connections who work for the company. So on one page, I'm getting all this myriad of information about this company that's just appearing in front of me. It's all automatic. It just means that opportunities just keep popping up on me. It's a really simple way to get an insight into what's going on. And this notion that I have about, you know, the recruitment industry isn't about information. It used to be. It's not anymore. Nowadays, it's all about extracting value from the information. That's why we do so much stuff on LinkedIn. You know, you get all this information from external sources. What are you going to do with it? You need to put it in a system that enables you to work with it really, really effectively to take complicated searches, make it so simple that all your staff can use it. You get a newbie into the recruitment industry, hasn't worked on it before. Within an afternoon, you need them operating in the way you know a pro recruiter can work and spot these opportunities to do new things. Okay, right, enough of the sales pitch. Um, if you're interested in intelligence, there's a whole lot more where this came from. 
But if you think there, some of this stuff relates to what you do, if, you, if you're interested in improving the way you recruit, give me a call and we'll talk about intelligence and see if it works for you. Um, if you've got questions about the LinkedIn stuff, post them in the forums and I'll respond to it and, and just make it open. If you've got specific questions about intelligence or you think it'll work for your business or you can promote it within your business or you just want to just have a look at it in a bit more detail to get some ideas about how you can take some of this cleverness and implement it in your own system, give me a call mode. I'm happy to talk to anybody. Okie dokie.